On today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I made this ice fishing cargo rack for the back of the snowmobile. Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors and like I said earlier uh, I thought uh, I'd share with you guys how I made this uh, ice fishing cargo rack that I mounted on the back of the snowmobile. Okay? Um, I know a lot of you guys have those good sleds that you pull behind your snowmobiles, four wheelers um, or even just uh, drag them behind when you're walking out on the ice and I utilize those uh, sleds too when I'm going out on the ice but there's a few reasons I wanted to make this cargo rack for going out on the ice. You know, um, pulling a sled does have a few downsides to it. Okay, one thing is if you got your auger, your electronics, uh, maybe a propane heater in the back of the sled, those things can get uh, banged around, bounced around pretty good, and you can break equipment uh, if you're pulling it behind a four-wheeler or a snowmobile. If you're going at any kind of speeds, if the ice is a little rough, that sort of thing. So that, that is one kind of downside about putting expensive equipment in the back of a sled and then taking off across the ice with it. Okay, and for me personally, another downside was um, if I want to uh, put this snowmobile in the back of a pickup truck, that doesn't leave me a lot of extra room, you know, for a big sled full of gear. Okay, now if you're trailering your snowmobiles, your four wheelers, and then you've got the bed of your pickup for, for your big sled and your gear, um, or in, in the back of a Suburban or an SUV, you know, that's all fine and good. If I can avoid using a trailer, I do really like doing that. So if I can just uh, get this snowmobile in the back of the truck uh, and kind of be on my way without a trailer, that, uh, that that's a good thing for me. So. That's a couple of the reasons that I wanted to kind of build this cargo rack. So what we got here is just a shallow wooden box, okay, uh, two by eights for the sides, half inch plywood for the floor, and then I bought a really inexpensive car top carrier, okay. That's what this part of it is, okay. I cut the bottom out and mounted it onto the top of this shallow box. Okay, and that kind of serves as our cover, um, our, our lid to the whole works, that sort of thing. And when I cut the bottom out, I did leave about an inch and a half all the way around of the bottom, all around the outside edge. And that's what I used to kind of screw down to this top edge of these uh, two by eights. Okay, and then underneath here, What I did is I just took some square tubing, okay? Took a couple pieces of square tubing, these, these smaller ones, I got from, uh, I got them off of an old satellite dish. And I just drilled holes through onto the rack of the snowmobile, drilled some holes through the rack of the snowmobile and mounted these. I didn't want to drill too big of a holes to compromise the strength of the rack. So the, the holes are, are fairly small. I used uh, 1024 machine screws. Um, I used good stainless steel uh, machine screws with the good nylon lock nuts. Okay, we don't want them to rust, we don't want them to come loose, that sort of thing. So that mounted um, these two smaller pieces of square tubing right onto the rack, okay? And that gave us a good flat platform to work off of. And then I took these longer pieces of square tubing and I bolted those down or use the machine screws to, to mount these right onto these pieces, okay? And that was basically, that gave us a nice extension off the back of the rack to accommodate uh, this, this whole box. 
And I'll go ahead and open this up and show you what we got here. zips open right and this is what I was talking about how I kept a little about an inch and a half two inches or so of the bottom of this uh, car top carrier and that's what I used to screw into the top edge of those two by eights okay I added some of these uh, these eyelets here okay for attaching bungee cords that sort of thing and as you can see this does go up high enough where it does accommodate a lot of stuff, right? Got uh, my bag of rods in here. I've got this, uh, you know, my uh, container of tip-ups, several tip-ups in here. Bucket, heater. Tackle bag. Okay. Got a hand auger right in here, taken apart. And Vexilar, right? Want to take that with you. Okay. So it does seem, it does hold quite a bit of gear because it does kind of go up high. And, and you could add more if you wanted to, of course. And, and I just keep several, you know, bungee cords right in here. Like I said, I've got these eyes that I can attach to to kind of cinch stuff down. You know, my slip on uh, ice cleats. Okay. Yeah, my buddy Ronnie Camaro, he thought it'd be a good idea if I mounted like a pedestal seat right here to kind of make it more like a bass boat. Um, I just, I didn't really see any sense to that though. Now of course this, uh, this cargo box doesn't fit everything that a guy might want to bring out on the ice with them. Okay, if you wanted to bring like a, a big portable shelter out with you, you still might want to incorporate uh, a pull behind sled. You know, I'm sh I'm sure there'll be trips where I'm going to be doing that. I'll be I'll be having a sled behind this too. But it is nice to maybe get your electronics and maybe your heater up in here, and and not having it banging around in the sled uh, that you're pulling behind the snowmobile or four wheeler. Now, one thing that you might be kind of wondering about in this cargo box is this and this okay and I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that's all about I did want to go ahead and build this uh, this cargo box to accommodate my power auger okay and of course this is something that you can kind of custom do to to mix and match with the auger that you might have okay now Jiffy model 30 it does come uh, detached from the power head with the uh, Allen head uh, screw okay so you can actually fit this in here this fits across here you know at an angle like that and then I can take the power head okay that kind of goes right there like that and then what I do is just kind of attach wing nuts onto this U-bolt that I mounted on here. And that keeps it really nice and secure in here. Throw the cover over it and you can go flying across the lake hitting bumps and your power head's nice and secure right on this foam rubber. It's not getting banged up. You know, it's, it's a little inconvenient to when you get to your spot to kind of put it together. You know, I mean, it, it, it takes 30 seconds to put it together. So, so it's not that big a deal. But um, one thing that is nice about this, like I say, when you put the cover on, now you're keeping like snow, sleet, uh, that sort of thing from, from getting onto your auger. And I have had problems in the past with that uh, when I've been transporting the augers and the augers are somewhat uh, exposed, you know. Uh, I had the carburetor, some springs in the carburetor kind of freeze solid one time. When I went to give it throttle, one of the springs pianged right off on me. That was a little bit of an issue that day. So it's nice to get this power head, you know, underneath this nice cover. You don't got to worry about snow, uh, sleet, ice getting on it, that sort of thing. Now, obviously you can see that when you put the power auger in here, that takes up some of the space, right? Okay. Everything in life is a compromise, right? 
So, but it's still, there's a lot of room. There still is a lot of room. And of course, like I said, we can go upward from here. There still is a lot of room for gear. Uh, I can stack gear uh, going upward. Again, I've got the bungee cords, you know, to kind of strap it down, that sort of thing. And then another thing I did is I kind of incorporated these like uh, buckling straps that come with the car top carrier. Okay. I mounted them here on the back of the, the box. And then you can kind of buckle these together and of course adjust the tension to however you need it. Then you can kind of pull down on this uh, this car top carrier and it won't just be flapping so much in the wind, you know. Just so now we're kind of using these straps how they were designed to be used, right? Uh, if this actually was on top of a, a vehicle, you know, kind of keeps this down nice and tight, keeps it from flapping in the wind, keeps all your gear kind of nice and tight and secured down so it's not bouncing up and down. So guys, there you have it. That's how I, uh, I put together this uh, ice fishing cargo rack for the back of the snowmobile. Uh, I think it's going to work out pretty darn good. Uh, like I say, it, it's not going to accommodate everything for every trip, but I might be able to keep uh, a few things in here all the time, kind of streamline the process of going out ice fishing uh, here and there. Maybe I can avoid uh, bringing a, uh, the big plastic pull behind sled with me on a few trips, which will be good. Uh, again, uh, if I put this uh, in the back of the truck, I don't have a lot of room for a sled once this is in the back of the truck. And if I don't have to take my utility trailer uh, to the, uh, the boat launches, that's a good thing too. So, yeah, I think this is going to work out pretty darn good. But, uh, hey, guys, remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.